a while ago, about the time when I installed the Rack Wireless LoRa Gateway uh, plus my DIY solar system on the rooftop, I got interested in these uh, Victron Energy cheap affordable MPPT charge controllers and I purchased my first one which is working great powering my LoRa Gateway and recharging a lead acid battery but then I saw that from time to time people tend to list these as damaged on eBay so I said that would make for an interesting uh, repair video and I purchased this one for 20 euros it was uh, listed as not working. A brand new one goes for about 50 to 60 euros depending on where you purchase it, what's the shipping cost and so on. So I said it could be worth it to get one for 20 euros and it would make for an interesting repair video. So the model number on, on this one is the Blue Solar MPPT 7510, uh, meaning it can do 75 volt solar panel input and up to 10 amps. Uh, I believe this is like the base model that you can get. And these do come with a, um, a serial interface which can be used for configuring its parameters. I can either get the original cable or you can uh, build yourself like I did here an adapter like this one uh, which is compatible with my Volink USB to serial adapter so you can just plug this into your computer but uh, with caution uh, not to have you know a solar panel or um, higher voltages connected to this while you connect it to your computer. Now taking one of these apart is a little bit tricky because they don't use any screws. It's glue holding it together. Now mine is already taken apart because I took a look but I'm going to explain how I did it. So in the case of this uh, particular model that I have there's two separate pieces. There's the blue part of the enclosure and this black acrylic back plate. Uh, but if you get like a higher power model, it might come with a metal backing for better heat sinking capability. So what I did was to start by, um, you know, inserting a, uh, a spudger and trying to pry off the corners of uh, this unit. Uh, you'll find that it has like one millimeter uh, inner edge holding this clear, clear, uh, acrylic panel. And that edge seemed to be glued with some um, CA glue. And you can see that I, I broke mine because I just put too much uh, stress on it. I just used some CA glue to put it back together. Now, like I said, this, because it is a lower spec model, doesn't need uh, heat sinking. So they just use this uh, acrylic panel uh, that is glued with, with some CA glue to this inner rim. And then it's also held together uh, by a load of this uh, silicon glue which is added to uh, this side of the PCB and on the other side of the PCB. Let me show you. On top of the inductor which was holding here. So what you have to do, now imagine the uh, plastic cover is on, you need to insert the spudger right between the plastic panel and the silicon glue and just work your way around it will release fairly easy as you can see and fairly clean like all of the silicon stuck to the PCB and then I did the same on this other side because I could see there is some glue in there so I just inserted the spudger and, and tried to pry off the silicon glue from the enclosure it was fairly easy it released without too much trouble and I believe it's it's achievable to do this without even uh, cracking this acrylic panel. One thing to be aware of is just always aim the spudger towards the panel, uh, towards the back panel, not towards the PCB, just to avoid doing any damage to the PCB itself or to the components. Keep it aimed at the plastic enclosure and with a bit of patience it should be uh, well possible to separate like this. Now I was thinking that maybe this unit went through some kind of event like over current, over voltage, over temperature that might have caused some damage. So I was looking around this uh, PCB to find some visible damage to the PCB or to some component. And we noticed the PCB has some conformal coating which is this thin resin that encapsulates the PCB to protect it from dust and moisture. But still any damage should still be visible and yet I couldn't find anything. 
and while I was taking a closer look um, I noticed something wasn't looking right on this yellow fuse it's a 20 amp automotive fuse and its job is to protect the battery port I believe and looking closer at this fuse we can see the fuse link inside looks like it might be blown and at this point I said to myself not again not one of those repair videos where the seller of the item on eBay couldn't be bothered to replace a fuse so yeah I just stuck a new fuse in there and yeah as expected uh, the inverter started working so that's you know good but doesn't make for a very interesting repair video because there isn't much happening here yeah I'm just gonna have to put this thing back together add some silicon glue to keep it uh, together I'm gonna run some basic tests to see everything is okay but other than that there isn't anything to repair here I now have a working spare charge controller I've even connected it to Victron Connect app via this um, special uh, adapter cable uh, and my Voltlink USB to serial adapter and the app showed that everything was running as expected I was able to charge a battery from the solar input I was able to perform the uh, MPPT function on the solar input uh, it was capable to run uh, just on the solar input powering the load or just on the battery input alone everything seemed fine uh, on the inverter it was just a blown fuse and if you ask me what could have happened to this inverter well I'm guessing I can only guess that the previous owner maybe have has reversed the battery terminals or maybe had a short circuit in his system which blew the fuse at which point he just decided to sell the damaged unit and if we look at how the terminals are arranged on this uh, unit this is a prime example of something I wouldn't ever do on a design of my own so we have the load terminals here with positive on the right negative on the left we have the solar panel input positive on the right negative on the left and then we have the battery input terminals with negative on the right positive on the left so if you started wiring this with the load and PV terminals and let's say you're using red and black wires when by the time you reach the battery terminals it would be very easy to make an error and just follow the same wire order of black and red wire that you had for these two connections and you would have them in reverse on the battery input so if you ask me this is bad design practice so in terms of uh, repair there isn't much that I could repair in this video because well I'm just gonna put some new silicon glue to put the thing together and uh, like like shown I've already ran basic tests to see everything is okay from the Victron Connect app and I now have a working spare Victron MPPT charge controller and yeah I guess I can take off this uh, sticker because uh, this unit is no longer bad so even though you might not get a lot in terms of uh, repair from this video I'm hoping it will at least show you how to take one apart for maintenance or repair should you need to do so so this is the end of our repair video let me know in the comments below if you own other uh, Victron gear does it have the same confusing arrangement uh, of the terminals and if you got anything useful out of this video please smash that like button and let me know in the comments uh, thank you for watching I would appreciate some feedback in the comments below and I will be seeing you next time